Welcome to Champion Minded, the podcast for those who aim for excellence, not only in the sports arena, but in life. My name is Alistair McCaw, author, speaker, mindset and performance coach, and my goal is to help you unleash your unlimited potential and provide you with the tools to achieve greatness. Are you ready to become Champion Minded? Then let's do this. Hey everybody, welcome to the Champion Minded Podcast or welcome back to it. I'm Alistair McCall. In this episode, I'm talking about accountability in a team. Now, accountability is a word that we hear so much about that you've got to stay accountable, that you've got to stay responsible, that you've got to take ownership. But what does that really mean? So in this podcast, I'm going to be sharing with you five things that you are accountable for when you're in a team. And this is great for sports teams, colleges, academies, corporates, it's all the same thing. Working in a team is about working together with people, but you have to bring your best individual self. So here are the five things. Get pen and paper, all right? So number one, the attitude and the energy you bring, you are accountable for. Look guys, we all know nobody loves likes somebody with a low energy, a bad attitude, that only creates a toxic environment. You know, your attitude and your energy are contagious. What energy and attitude are you bringing on a daily basis? Now, here's the thing. We don't always wake up feeling great. We always don't wake up feeling like we can take on the world. Same, same with myself as well. But what I do is I give myself a pep talk. I get my attitude straight. I have a little bit of attitude management where I say to myself, okay, this is not the person I want to be. This is not the energy I want to bring. And I try to talk myself into bringing a better energy and attitude. And guys, most of the time, actually almost all of the time, it changes. What we think we become, what we think we are, right? So that's where it all starts, the energy and, and the attitude you bring. Now, what contributes to your attitude and your energy? Simple. A lot of things. The people that you surround yourself with, the thoughts that you have, the things you watch, listen, uh, follow, for example, on social media, uh, your energy, how you're taking care of yourself, obviously your nutritional habits, your sleeping habits, all these things. These things are all geared around performance because at the end of the day, you want to bring your best self to your team, right? You want to have a great season or you want to have a great term at work or whatever it may be. You want the best results. But nothing happens if you don't change. To have change, you have to change first. So number one, bring a great attitude and energy. Okay, this is a mindset. You get to choose your attitude and your energy every single day. Nobody wants a moody team player. Nobody, nobody wants to think, well, what are we going to get from this person today? All right. Be consistent. This is where the high performers are, is that they're consistent in their attitude and energy right? Okay, perfect. Number two in being accountable in a team is your preparation. You are accountable for your preparation. And again, that starts with waking up in the morning, being prepared for the day, having a good breakfast, having enough time to prepare yourself properly before you leave the house or before you leave your apartment or whatever it may be. That's where it starts, your preparation. Okay. Um, don't, if it's 10 minutes to, to the practice facility, then leave 20 minutes before because if you get red lights all, all along the way, then that's going to leave you late as well. You want to arrive to your practice facility or your work environment, whatever it is, with loads of time. All right. You want to get there. You want to be relaxed. Maybe grab a cup of coffee or a drink or whatever it may be. Speak to some friends or colleagues. But this is the best way to prepare before arriving for practice. Don't just get there on time. Get there way before time. All right. Preparation as well. Preparation in your performance. Warming up well, for example. I can't tell you how many people or colleges or or, or locations I visit where I just see athletes going through the motions. Okay. If you want to be the best uh, that you can be, everything matters. Every single little detail matters. And high-performing teams are great on the small details. They are accountable for taking taking care of the small details. They don't need their coaches or their leaders to be reminding them all the time. It's because these type of team players want to perform at a high level. They just don't talk about it. They do it. They put it into action. You can see it. You can see it in their warm-ups. You can see it in their 
their focus in their practices or in their meetings, whatever it may be, they are 100% locked in and focused. They're prepared. You'll also find that high performers that are very accountable will do the extra work. They'll stay afterwards and, and put in the extra hours. These are lessons for success in life, okay? Is that if you want to get further, you've got to be willing to give the extra 5% without having to be asked. Okay, listen, if you're in a team environment, there's nothing better than, a, than a, a player that wants to work hard or a team member that wants to work harder. That will give you a better chance of getting promotions, of being elevated up the, the ladder in your team, for example. These are the things that coaches and leaders see. It is not just the skill set. It is more so your attitude, your effort level, your, your work ethic. All these things count towards being selected or being chosen over another person. All right, your preparation. Be well prepared. Have structure to your day. Know what you're doing tomorrow. Uh, be prepared with your equipment. Be prepared with your the things you need for that day. Be prepared in your nutritional side as well. This is these are all things that are geared before uh, uh, for high performance. Right. Good. So number three, you defend your team culture or you defend your environment. So you know where you are right now. There's there's most likely values or standards or rules for you. Like now. Here's the thing about life is that we all need discipline, okay? And sometimes we're not always going to like the rules and the standards and the values that have been placed upon us, but they're there for a reason. They're there to produce results. They're there to produce better outcomes. They're there to produce better behaviors. This is the reason why we have values, standards, and rules. These are not just something from the leadership team or the coaches, for example. To create favorable outcomes, we need better beliefs which produce better behaviors, which pr produce better results. That's how it works, okay? So defending your team culture also means that you defend against gossip, especially in the locker room or in the cafeteria or wherever, wherever it may be, away from uh, the leadership or the leaders or the coaches, uh, or you're maybe away from other uh, team members in the group. Gossip is a culture killer. Gossip is a toxic killer. And here's the thing, guys, about gossip. If you're gossiping, people won't trust you. If you're talking about other people behind their back, about the coaches, about the leaders, about other team players, they will eventually not trust you. Yes, gossip sometimes feels good, and we like to talk about other things. But at the end of the day, it breaks down trust, and it breaks down a great team chemistry. Right? So defend your team culture. If you hear somebody gossiping or speaking wrong of someone, say to them, we don't do that around here within this team. We have high standards. If you have a problem with that person or that coach or that leader, go and speak to them yourselves. But you defend your culture. When you see bad behavior from another teammate or a colleague, for example, you'll be able to step up and tell that person. Here's the thing, guys. In great teams, there's open and honest communication. We're not scared to tell somebody else how we're feeling or that they're doing something that's violating the team's standards because it's for the greater good. If you do that in a respectful way, if you have the right tone, if you have the right time of saying those things, that person will respect it. In great team environments, people don't get offended when somebody else calls them out on something, respectfully, of course. All right? The problem with team cultures that go toxic is that things aren't spoken about enough. They're swept under the carpet and they're not brought to surface. So in great team environments, we, we talk about things and you are accountable for that as well. So that was number three. Number four, you are a great team player. What does that mean? You encourage, you support, you uh, step up for your team when needed. You, you respect a selection process. You respect... Uh, leadership and coaches decisions that is what it means to be a great team player of course you bring a great energy and attitude as we mentioned in, in the first comment as well even when you don't feel like it great team players are always looking out for their teammates they're always looking out to see where they can help them where they can support them you know if you're getting up to go get a drink or you're getting up to go um, uh, get something, for example, you will ask your team if they'd like something as well. You're always in a service and supportive mission, right? You respect the team values. You respect your teammates. That is what a great team player does. Again, you are accountable for bringing that attitude. You're accountable for playing that role 
within a team, even when you don't feel like it, even when you don't think things are fair, you step up for your team and become a great team player. All right. Number five in accountability in a team is commitment. The thing that you said you would do when you first started with that team, with that college, with that corporate, whatever it may be, you committed to it. All right. That requires a uh, a commitment with yourself, first of all, is that you committed to it. There's nothing worse than lying to yourself about things. There's nothing worse than committing to something in the beginning and then quitting or stepping back or not fulfilling what you said that you, you could do or you promised to do, for example. Guys, commitment means all in, 100%. There's not going to be things you like. There's not going to be standards and rules you like. There's not going to be decisions you like. That is all part of being in a team and being a part of a season. You have to understand that. If you're in a school, if you're in a college right now, this is a great lesson to take forward for you once you leave. Once you get into the corporate world, once you get into the big world, life is not fair. <laughs> life is not fair. So there's going to be things that you're not going to like. There's going to be decisions you're not going to like. But commitment are you all in? All in is that you're defending the team culture, you're bringing a great attitude and energy, you're, um, you're being a great team player, you're committing to what you said you would do in the first place. All right, guys, I know you're going to have a great year, a great season, um, a great period, whatever it may be, but stay accountable. Be honest with yourself. I'll go through those again. Number one, the attitude and energy you bring. Number two, your preparation. Number three, you defend your team culture. Number four, you're a great team player. And number five, commitment. There you have it, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Remember that this podcast is available on YouTube and on iTunes. Connect with me on social media, on Instagram, Be Champion Minded, Twitter, at Alistair McCall, and on Facebook, Alistair McCall page. So, until next time, remember, you were made for greatness, now go do the work. Stay champion-minded, guys.